somewhere on Earth, the wind is blowing. What is the wind? We can't see the wind any more than we can see the air it's made of. But we can feel the wind and see it move things when it blows. For example, if we light a smoke bomb on this beach, we can watch how wind blows the smoke. The smoke shows us that the wind is flowing horizontally from water to land. That gives us a starting definition of the wind. It's a horizontal flow of air. It takes a force of some kind to make things move. That means some kind of force must be making the wind blow. What is this invisible force? We can find out by making an artificial wind blow in the laboratory. Here's a plastic box filled with air. On top, we'll install an airtight lid. The lid is flexible with a handle in the middle. At one end of the box, there's an open valve and a source of smoke. First, we'll press down on the flexible top. When we do, a tiny wind blows out of the box. To learn what force is moving that air, we'll use two homemade gauges. If either gauge's cover is pressed down, a needle will move on its scale. We'll put one gauge inside the box and seal its top. We'll leave the other outside. When we start, both gauges read the same. Now we'll close the valve so no air can escape. Then we'll press down on the box's top. This compresses the air inside. The gauges show that the air pressure is now higher inside the box than it is outside. What do you think will happen if we open the air valve? Air stops flowing when the pressure inside and outside are the same. We can reverse the air's movement by pulling up on the box's lid. This makes the air pressure lower inside the box than it is outside. Last time we saw air move from a place of higher pressure to a place of lower pressure. This time, the same thing happens, but with an important difference. The air pressure is now lower inside the box than outside. When we open the valve, air flows from outside in. Again, we see that air moves from a place of higher pressure to a place of lower pressure. This suggests that a difference in air pressure may be what makes the wind blow. We can test this with a barometer, another instrument that measures changes in air pressure. The numbers stand for millibars. They describe very small increments of air pressure. Right now, air pressure on the beach is 1,013 millibars. 20 miles at sea right now, the air pressure is higher, 1,014 millibars. 20 miles inland, the air pressure is lower, only 1,012 millibars. Just as in the laboratory, air is moving from a place of higher pressure to a place of lower pressure. Why should air pressure be different from one place to another? To find out, we'll recreate conditions on the beach inside this larger box. A tray of water represents the ocean. Notice that the air over the water is 72 degrees. A tray of dark soil represents the land. The air over the soil is also 72 degrees. Have we recreated the conditions needed to make wind? The smoke plume suggests no, the air inside the box is not moving. What's missing is the heat of the sun. To simulate the sun, we'll use a lamp. After 15 minutes, the temperature of the air over the soil has risen from 72 degrees to 95 degrees. In contrast, the air over the water has only risen to 80 degrees. Why the difference? 
the dark soil absorbs heat faster than water. As it warms, it heats the air over it faster than the nearby water heats the air over its surface. Now our simulation works. A current of air is flowing from the water toward the soil. The air on the beach did the same thing. Look what else is happening. Air over the soil is rising. At the same time, air over the water is falling. Why should one part of the air rise while another falls nearby? To find out, we'll compare the behavior of air in these two flasks. Right now, they each contain the same amount of air, and so they weigh the same. Each flask's temperature is about 72 degrees. We'll attach a balloon to a valve on one of the flasks. Watch what happens to the weight of this flask when we heat the air inside it. Heat raises the pressure of the air inside and some of the air pushes its way out into this balloon. When it does, the flask's weight changes. The flask gets a little lighter. Now the heated flask weighs less than the cooler flask. Whenever hot air expands, it gets lighter. That explains why air is circulating inside the box. When the air over the soil gets warmer, it expands and weighs less than the air over the water. The cooler, heavier air over water sinks and flows along the bottom of the box. That pushes the warmer, lighter air up, and a wind blows inside this box. This gives us another definition of wind, the circulation of air between areas of warmer temperature and cooler temperature. Earlier we saw there was a difference in air pressure between the water and the land. We should also be able to find a difference between the temperature of the air over the ocean and the air over the land. On the ocean, the air temperature is 62 degrees. Inland, the air temperature is 74 degrees. The same thing is happening here that happened in our lab experiment. Cooler, heavier air over the ocean is sinking. As it does, its pressure is rising. Meanwhile, warmer, lighter air over the land is rising and its pressure is falling. The wind is blowing from an area of higher pressure to an area of lower pressure. You probably know from time spent at the beach that during the day, the wind usually blows in from the water toward the land. But you also know that the wind can change speed and direction. We've come back to the beach a few days after our first tests. Now the wind is blowing out over the ocean, even though the air is cooler out there. Why has the wind changed direction? A clue can be found in a cloud of dust farther inland. 40 miles inland, loose silt and dust are kicked up by a violent wind. What could make this wind blow? There must be a mass of cold, heavy air somewhere nearby. We'll look for it with measurements of temperature and pressure. Here the dust is being picked up and carried away. Here is the beach where we set off the smoke bomb. You can see which way the wind is blowing. Here on a weather ship, the temperature is 69 degrees and the air pressure is 1,014 millibars. Here at a weather station, the temperature is 50 degrees and the air pressure is 1,029 millibars. At another weather station here in Utah, the temperature is 24 degrees and the air pressure is 1,032 millibars. Can you see the pattern? Cold, heavy air is flowing down to the coast where the air is warmer and the air pressure is lower. These conditions are creating enough wind to raise a lot of sand and dust. Local pressure conditions at the beach have been overwhelmed by this larger weather pattern. 
The cloud of dust is blowing out over the ocean while a high cold pressure air mass rolls in from the northeast. There are even larger factors that make winds blow. For example, energy from the sun does not evenly heat our planet. The Arctic regions receive less warmth, especially during seasons when the days are very short. Equatorial regions get more warmth. They bake in the sun every day of the year. Thus, air is always cooler in some places, warmer in other places. And of course, the Earth itself is turning. Some places are bathed in warming light, while others cool in nighttime darkness. Factors like these guarantee that the restless wind is always blowing, always moving. Thank you.